For the youngest, this will be among their first memories. Small, comforting gestures as parents try to shelter their children from their fear. Not the fear of the bombs they fled. Fear that the better life they risked so much for was just an illusion. Upwards of 10,000 people are stuck along what was a transit point. This is the Greek side of the border with Macedonia, demarcated by a fence where there used to be none. In recent weeks, Macedonia has only been allowing a few dozen people a day through, and only Iraqis and Syrians. The overarching logic that transit and destination countries are maxed out, and that risks turning Greece into a massive refugee camp. Ahmed and his family have been waiting for around two weeks, but they might never make it. His wife does not have her Syrian ID. When the strikes hit, we just ran away, he says. I happened to have my ID in my pocket. Hers was in the house. They never had a chance to go back, and stricter regulations make identification many fled without mandatory. Ahmed says they had no idea. His relatives made it to Germany in just six days a few months ago. The line for food, a sandwich, is a two-hour wait. These women, these young mothers from Aleppo, were just telling us that the hardest thing about all of this, and they can put up with just about everything, is the uncertainty of it all, not knowing how long they will have to continue living like this. They are, like the others here, aware that there are high-level meetings that will be taking place between European leaders and Turkey, and it gives them the slightest bit of hope that perhaps this misery will end. Life does morph as those who fled war know too well. Fadi, who went broke getting here, reopened his Aleppo barber salon, a far cry from the business he used to own back home. And Hamza, one of six siblings, highly entertained by our mic, has big plans for his future, or so we think. <laughs> Who knows what will happen to these children's dreams, given Europe's rising anti-immigrant stance, and the reality that in the last eight months since the refugee crisis first made major headlines, instead of viable solutions, there have simply been barricades and blame games.